Good morning, good evening, good day, and welcome to Drama Buds. I'm Francine, I really love K-dramas, and I'm going to spend as much time as I want talking about them. Welcome to my podcast. So, hello everyone. Uh, Today's episode is... Pretty much going to be another rant session or speculation session. Who knows? Uh, today, we are going to be talking about the candidates or the nominees for the various Big Sang Arts Awards dramas, which is like, it's kind of the most prestigious um, award-giving body in, in South Korea. So, you know, it's, it's pretty legit. <laughs> These are the legit awards for, you know, TV and film productions for the past year or so and today we are joined by uh, my sister once again who who previously joined us in uh, episode five the infamous startup episode uh hello my sister hi i'm here to change my image <laughs> uh today we will be very calm uh very chill <laughs> there will be no anger <laughs> no anger tonight. <laughs> okay, so disclaimer by the way, we recorded this one week before the actual actual awards. So it will come out around four days before the show. So who knows how things will play out, you know, in four days after this this episode is released. Okay, so uh we are going to start talking about each of the categories working our way up to best drama okay let's start with um the one we know the least about best new actress gosh you only know like one person wait i'll i'll introduce the 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 nominees for now um we have five nominees for each category so for best new actress the ones nominated are Kim Yeon Su from Penthouse the Penthouse War in Life as Beirona uh Park Kyu Young from Sweet Home as Yoon Jisoo, Park Joo Hyun from Extracurricular as Bae Gyuri, Lee Joo Young from Times as So Jung In, and Choi Sung Un from Beyond Evil as Yoo Jae. So, laser bets. Do we know? I only know. I've only watched two people here. It's um Sweet Home and Beyond Evil. Yeah. We watched one episode of Extracurricular, but I don't know if that's enough to judge. I mean, she's based on what little we saw of her. We, we, yeah, we described her as like Kim Theory vibes. But like one episode, so we don't know. And it's not like it demanded much. So, bets, who, who would you? Uh, I don't have a bet. I mean, okay, I don't think, I don't think Sweet Home, Park Yu Young, should get it. I mean, I don't. I, I, she wasn't particularly memorable to me in Sweet Home. I would remember Go Min She even, but maybe that's because that was like during the love alarm day, so <laughs> I was into it. And then, like, J. Yi from Beyond Evil. I mean, Choi Song Un. It's just. What? What What was special? She barely had any that? screen time. I know. So, yeah, I mean, so maybe, I don't know, maybe the front runners Kim Yoon Soo from Penthouse. Maybe Lee Joo She's the only lead here. Lee Joo was the lead in times. Oh, okay. Maybe. I, th- that's the thing with like the best new actor and actress um, nominees. It, sometimes they're just filling up the slot because yeah. they have to nominate someone. But like, I don't particularly think any of these... Well, I only watched two of them. So maybe that's my fault. So, yeah. I don't really have any bets yeah. here. Okay. Let's just move on to Best New Actor. Okay, this one. In which there is only one acceptable winner. And that's Lee Do Yoon from 18 again as Hong Dae Yong. Okay, but oh, sorry. I should have introduced the other nominees. <laughs> sorry, got carried away. None of them matter. Only Lee Do Yoon matters. Okay, so the other people in the running are Kim Yong Dae uh, from The Penthouse War in Life as Ju Sok Hoon. Na In Woo from River Where the Moon Rises as On Dal. Nam Yun Su from Extracurricular as Kwak Kite, Song Kang from Sweet Home as Cha Yun Su, and Lee Do Yun from 18 again as Hong Dae Yong. I am scared for this. <laughs> like, if Lee Do Yun doesn't win, I genuinely don't know if I should trust 
the big song arts awards anymore who, who who else do you think has a chance here okay again taking out penthouse and extracurricular because i didn't watch oh, them and then remember where the moon rises i didn't watch it either but i know like we all know na in who's like heroic efforts he reshot everything like episodes 1 to 20 in a month he you know he would film like 45 scenes a day he was casted in a day, like right after Mr. Queen. And people say that he was pretty good in River Where the Moon Rises. I don't know if that's like the, you know, the anti Jisu thing talking, but they said he was good. Props to him, you know. I don't know if like that would be enough to make him win. So, yeah. And then Song Kang in Sweet Hope. I mean, why? Even in Sweet Hope, it's like Lee Do Yoon. Lee Do Yoon was the best character <laughs> and the best actor. Okay. I mean, like, what was Song Kang even doing? He was just, you know, fighting not to be a monster. So, I don't know. I mean, if Song Kang was nominated for Love Alarm instead, I would say, you lose. No. <laughs> it's a sure no. It's a sure no. <laughs> and then with Sweet Hope, I'm just like, why? Why is this nominated? Why is this here? You know, if... I don't know, maybe if Naviliera <laughs> was counted, still a no. <laughs> I mean, okay, it's just that for me, yeah, the clear winner in this category should be Lido Yun, and the only acceptable other winner would be Na In Wu. If only, if only because, you know, props for what he did. But like, this is not a A plus for effort award. I'm scared about the extracurricular guy. Because like, this guy is not the male, the main lead. Of extracurricular, he's like the second male lead. Uh-huh. So that's why I'm I'm confused. Like, how good is he that he overshadowed the male lead, or like what was his role supposed to be? Because like we barely saw him in the first well, episode. You know, maybe he didn't really overshadow. It's just that the main the main lead sucks. Maybe we don't know. We didn't watch it. But I mean, okay, you know what? If the thing is for me, like Lee Do Yoon carried eighteen again on his back. Like for me, sometimes I feel like. Shouldn't he be in the best actor category instead, considering he's a lead? But, you know. That's a sure lose. Yeah, that's a sure lose. So, let's put him in a category where he could win. Yeah. So, I think we've established that Lee Doyen is. I really. Like, you will get an update from me next week. <laughs> from uh, next week's episode, if I'm like. Maybe if you don't see me in next week's episode. <laughs> if next week's episode never happens. Lee Doyun probably lost, and I have lost all faith in the K drama world. <laughs> okay, next category Best Supporting Actress. Okay, so the nominees are Park Hasun from Birth Care Center as Cho Unjong, Shin Un Kyung from The Penthouse War in Life as Kang Mari, Yom Yeran from The Uncanny Counter as Chu Meok, Jang Yong Nam from It's Okay to Not Be Okay as Park Hengja, and Cha Chong Wa from Mr. Queen as Court Lady Choi. We've watched The Uncanny Counter, It's Okay to Not Be Okay, and Mr. Queen here. You know, I'm almost tempted to say Yo Mieran from The Uncanny Counter just because I-, I feel like she's the only one who actually deserves to be nominated for Best Supporting Actress. I mean, Nurse Park's role in, in It's Okay to Not Be Okay, or I-, I don't know if it's like, because I'm still mad about the mother plot. I mean, it wasn't particularly awesome. I mean, it was like watching the show. What made it like um really hit you, I guess, was like the shock factor of the twist, but not really the acting. But then you know, it's also a show where like they're all good actors. So I don't know. I feel like you know if they put in best supporting actress here for who's this for Nurse Park, I I just I just feel like there are other shows. I can't think of any other shows. Because, like, you know, we don't think about best supporting That's actors true. and actresses. Yeah. And then for Mr. Queen, I'm just like, I don't know, it's hard for me to judge comedy. So, yeah. Yom Yeran. But, like, I wouldn't really know you. Okay, so, uh, looking at last year's winner, we got Kim Sun Yong from Crash Landing on You as the the lady from yeah, the, the North, North Korean. Korean lady. Right? So, see, comedic roles can still win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, going by that, then maybe, yeah, Court Lady Choi has a chance in Mr. Queen. We we don't know enough about the best yeah, supporting actresses. Yeah. But, like, after this, we know. We know a lot. Of- well, <laughs> we know. But, okay. So, next category. Best 
supporting actor. Yes. The nominees are Kim Son Ho from Startup, Ha Ji Pyong. <laughs> iconic. Kim Ji Hoon from Flower of Evil as Bake Hee Song. Another yes. iconic role. Oh Jung Se from It's Okay to Not Be Okay as Moon Sang Te. Iconic. Um, Lee Hee Joon from Mouse as Go Moo Chi. Sorry, they didn't, didn't watch. watch that. Sorry. And Choi Dae Hoon from Beyond Evil as Park Jung Jae. <laughs> Simon. <laughs> <laughs> so if you did not get the joke, um, we refer to this guy like the entire time we were watching Beyond Evil, and every time we were referring to this character, we were like, "Oh no, where's Simon? What happened to Simon?" Because that was his name um, in Do You Like Brahms, where he was like the annoying international manager of what's his name, Park Jun Young, yeah, yeah, yeah. Park Jun Young, and like Simon. <laughs> but okay. But even when we saw him in Flower of Evil. Yes, Simon. he was Moon Chae-won's boss, boss in the police station. And he was still Simon. Because you were watching that at the same time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he was he's always Simon. Let us first acknowledge <laughs> the the real victory here is the fact that Kim Son Ho was nominated. Yes. More than anything else. Okay. If you did not listen to the startup episode, it's episode five on Drama Buds. And it's also two hours long so um basically half of that was just us being mad at the show and us loving Han Ji Pyong the only character who deserved to be there and Talmoni and like the vindication we felt when he was announced as a nominee and among all the categories there was only one nominee from that terrible show called Startup and it's it's Kim Son Ho that was like my second happiest moment when I saw the Big Sang nominees. The first you will know later. And I think, like to be honest, who expected that? <laughs> no one, right? Though, honestly, looking at all the nominees here, like this is a pretty good selection of people. That's why it's like, okay, even though our, my clear winner at least, is Oh Jung Se as Moon Sang Tae and It's Okay to Not Be Okay. The clear, objective winner. Don't. <laughs> your love will not, you know, <laughs> lift, you know, Han Ji Pyong up from the terrible writing. Like, it was a terribly written show and he just managed to save that role by being a good actor. But, but It's Okay to Not Be Okay is good writing of a very difficult to portray character and then just an amazing portrayal. So, I think, what was the joke that they made in Two Days One Night? The the variety show that Kim Son Ho oh, yeah. is in? That, um, <laughs> why, why am I thinking chatty, you know, it was Jong Min, Kim Jong Min said, oh, who are you up against? And then Son Ho listed them and they're all his, like, seniors. And then, <laughs> and then Jong Min said, oh, Jong Se will win this. <laughs> and Sean was like, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think everyone knows Oh Jung Se should win this. But, okay, credits to... Uh, yeah, Son Ho's good. Um, Big Hee Song is good. Hey. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I will share my thoughts on each of them. Okay, go. So what, are, what are your thoughts okay. on Big Hee Song? Okay, yeah. So Kim Son Ho, yeah, I, I, fine, you, you said it. Another thing, though, is that I'm just, I'm also glad that he was nominated for Best Supporting Actor instead of Best New Actor. If he was in Best New Actor, I would feel bad for Lee Do Yoon, you know? Because, like, <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not saying that I think he's better. I just think that. <laughs> if you could see my face right now. The, oh, how dare you. Fine, whatever. But yeah, so glad that Son Ho is here. Uh, if, if he, even if he doesn't win, at least I'll see him in Bake Sang. And the next is Kim Ji Hoon from Flower of Eva's Big Hee Song. Okay, you know what I said earlier about Nurse Park? It's like, you know, it wasn't like even like that hard of a role to act. It's just like the shock factor of it all. But then this guy, this Big Hee Song, it's like, it's iconic, man. Like, yeah, there's the shock factor thing of like, oh, crap, he woke up. And then, oh, he's walking. And then like, he does all the, these evil things. But it's also brilliantly acted. Like, He's good. He's a good actor. He's act. really good though. And I think I think he has a couple of projects. I think he, he'll be in the next Money Heist. So I'm just glad that he's getting recognized or something. I mean, this is the first time I've seen him. But I love him. 
I mean, for me, like, the best, best villain, you know? Baki Song. Yeah. <laughs> and then ever we see, like, a blonde guy in any TV show, it's like, Baki Song is here. Baki Song. <laughs> and then Ozong say, yeah, of course. I mean, he's gonna win this. Except, you know, for, like, that small, small miracle that I'm praying for, which is that Ozong Se gets the day sang. And then Kim Son Ho wins Best Supporting Actor. <laughs> the very small miracle that I'm praying for. So yeah, I mean, I think Oh Jung Se, yeah, clear, clear winner. Okay, thoughts on, you know, Lee Hee Joon in Mouse, which we did not watch, just, yeah. just to be clear. But from what I've heard or what I've read, he was pretty, pretty much carried the show in the first half like it was before before the reveal of like Lee Sung Gi's character being like the actual big bad or, or like the villain or killer whatever like it was Gomuchi who everyone was talking about so i don't know maybe he was good maybe maybe and lastly for Simon he was okay he was he was good he was in okay. his role yeah. i mean i just think that you know uh in a way he was sort of like a mentally challenge or something. I mean, there was that aspect to it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it's hard because, you know, you're in the same category with Moon Sang Tae. So it's sort of like, uh, yeah. But he did okay. But yeah. I don't think he's, yeah. you know, yeah. the top, top running. So, so it's something. Yeah. It's something. Unless, you know, Unless the miracle, miracle, the miracle happens. Next category, we're going to the, the heavier ones. Not really. Okay, um, Best Actress Nominees are Kim so Hyun from The Penthouse War in Life as Chon so Jim, Kim so Hyun f- uh, from River Where the Moon Rises as Princess Pyonggang, So Ye Ji from It's Okay to Not Be Okay as Go Moon Yong, Shin Ye Sun from Mr. Queen as Queen Cho Rin, and Um Ji Won from Birth Care Center as Oh Yoon Jin. Mm. Well, we watched It's Okay to Not Be Okay. We watched some of Mr. Queen. And then the rest, not really. We tried River Where the Moon Rises a few episodes, but we, we, a few, like one episode, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe one episode, uh, but, but not really. Okay. I would have placed my first bet as Soyeji. I would have, really. I mean... Honestly, among the main three of It's Okay to Not Be Okay, like, she, for me, was the weakest link acting-wise. But I still think she did well enough, you know, to deserve the nomination and the win, if ever. However, because of, like, the recent controversy around her in Korea, like, knowing their culture, knowing that the issue is too fresh, she might not get it. And so my next bet would be Shin Ye Soon in Mr. Queen. I think with Jin Ye Soon, though, um, it's sort of similar to how So Yoon Jin is, like when she won the Best New Actress, in the sense that, you know, she does well with the comedic part, and she also does well with the dramatic part, so like, you can see her entire range. I suppose in Mr. Queen, we didn't really get to the part where it was intensely dramatic, but like, <laughs> okay, the thing with, I don't know, should I disclose this? That we tried to watch Mr. Queen twice, and we didn't. We just dropped it both times because I was like, we we just can't get ourselves invested in this. And the thing is, like, it's such a hard carry for for Shin Ye Soon. I mean, girl was trying so hard to be fun, to do everything and be funny. Like the only reason why we managed to make it to like episode nine is because like, yeah. you know, every now and then she gets a funny scene and then we can actually we're actually interested in watching it. But every other time it's just like mm. ah. right. But then again, that's the thing with us and comedy, in Korean comedy. It's just such a it's a hit or miss for us. Okay. Okay. I looked at the previous winners of the Best Actress uh, award. It's Kim Hee A from World of the Married. Year before that is Yeom Jong Ah from Sky Castle. Year before that is Kim Nam Joo from Misty. It's like it's a series of you know intense ladies, and so I think the one continuing that tradition would be Kim So Yeon in the Penthouse. And like, okay, I'm sorry if you're a fan of the Penthouse and you're listening to this. Okay, I'm really sorry, but like, I didn't know that people took that show seriously. I thought it was. 
I, I thought it was just like a makjang, you know, that people just like watch because, oh, intense and all that. But I didn't think it was like, wow, critically acclaimed best actress nominee deserving performances. And okay, just I'm just putting it out there. But to everyone saying like, wow, Penthouse is the next Sky Castle or whatever. It's like, no, the best actress nominees prove that Penthouse is not Sky Castle because in the year of Sky Castle, three of the five slots were from Sky Castle. Okay, like that's how intense that that um year was and how they dominated the best actress um category. But like clearly in the Penthouse, she's the standout, or like the others could not perform, you know, to the level where the panel would think they deserve three nominations out of five. And like, yeah, going back to people talk the show seriously. <laughs> I don't know. Whenever I see clips of it, it's just very dramatic to me. But maybe that those are the previous winners. Some would say the world of the married was over dramatic and she was overacting. They they could say that about Sky Castle too. I think I think like for those cases you mentioned, at least for Sky Castle and for World of Married, I actually think that the reason they got the best actress is because it's a role that's easy to overact, and yet it's a controlled performance. Because that's the vibe I got for for both those shows. Like you know, like especially for Sky Castle, like these ridiculous things are happening, and it's easy to just go crazy and whatever. But they're you know they they were very contained, so. So I think that's sort of the only like acceptable way the the penthouse <laughs> could get this but but I don't know I didn't watch the show and like I I just need to mention props to Kim Soyun okay for being nominated for this like she's so young and like I mean I know she's been working in the industry for a long time but like I'm just really excited for you know everything that's coming next for her because I also love her in Love Alarm so hi Love Alarm fan here <laughs> I mean, a lot of people say River Where the Moon Rises as a project, you know, is good. Yeah. Like, as a whole, it's pretty good. I think so. we're just waiting for, you know, everything, for the whole Rashad thing to be posted, to be um, on view. Yeah, uploaded on view. Yeah, and then we'll watch it. But yeah, I think uh, she she doesn't have a great chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay, she'll have other chances. Yeah, she's young. She's young. And it's like... For a child actress, it's really hard to transition to being, like, a lead actress. You know, like, many child actors, they kind of stay in that weird yeah. age range where they're, like, you're still seen as a child actor. So, you're always playing, like, the younger versions or, like, the child of the bigger actor and all that. <laughs> Namdaru. We are still waiting for him to finally transition into being a male lead, you know. But but yeah, like Kim So Yoon is one of the few child actresses that made that transition successfully. So go girl. <laughs> you're you're gonna be fine. You're you're she's taking on more, you know, more complex roles, not just like high schooler roles. Like Love Alarm. It's just a high schooler role. Hey. Okay. Come on. Because I mean, okay, fine. Like just a brief tangent on Love Alarm. Can I do that? I I mean for me, yeah, it's easy. To, I it's easy to dismiss it as that. But uh, to be fair, the story is actually pretty engaging. Like, more so than, you know, the other rom-coms that we've watched. So, so yeah. Like, it's just in relation to, like, your uh, Francine's previous episode on, like, you know, introducing this fantasy aspect and then introducing the rules or, like, you know, adding rules as you go. That's sort of what happened in this show. But it sort of made sense because, you know, it's an app and it's being developed. But anyway, my point is, like, watch Love Alarm. It's actually pretty decent. Uh, sorry, before we move on, though, can I say something about Soyeji? Go. I just feel sad, really, about, you know, just, uh, like, this whole controversy and how that sort of makes it impossible for her to be credited for, like, the work that she did here and it's okay to not be okay. Like, I concur with Francine on the whole. Like, she's the weakest of the three and all that. But, y- you know, it's still pretty high caliber. And she was actually my bet to win. Um... Before, even before I found out that Shin Yesun was nominated. So, yeah, and like, she has good range. How could you say she has good range? You've watched her in one show, or two shows. Yeah, but like, Lawless Lawyer was comedic. So, for the last actor category, we have Best Actor. And our nominees are 
Kim Soo from It's Okay to Not Be Okay as Moon Gang Te, Song Jung Ki from Vincenzo as Vincenzo Casano, Shin Ha Kyun from Beyond Evil as Lee Dong Shik, Um Ki Jun from The Penthouse War in Life as Ju Dan Te, and Lee Jun Gi from Flower of Evil as Baeki Song slash Do Yun Su. Take it away! So I said earlier that I had two happy moments and Son Ho being nominated was just a second. The first one was Lee Jung Gi being nominated for Best Actor in Flower of Evil. Because, first of all, who watched Flower of Evil even? I mean, it had like, I think the ratings were just like 5 or whatever. And I, I'm like, uh... You know, it's not. It had a lot of moments where I was just like, "Why are they doing this? Like, this is bad." I mean, it had a lot of good moments too. Like, you know, you're really in it. But then there are just like these big moments that take you out of it. Like, not as bad as Sisyphus, but you know, <laughs> I mean, like the underwater CPR, the amnesia in the finale. I mean, just these moments. Why? But you know, I mean, through all of that, it's just like. Jungi was pouring everything he had in it, you know? And, like, this was his comeback project after Lawless Lawyer in 2018. And, and like, this is Jungi, okay? Like, I, I think with him... <laughs> sorry, I, I am a hugely Jungi fan. Um, The thing with him is, like, he, he sort of was kind of typecasted into sago or, like, action roles just because he's very active and he likes doing those stuff. Um, So this was kind of new for him. And I could really see, like, how much, you know, work he put into it. So I was really glad, happy to see him nominated here. But, you know, <laughs> we're, we're going to get into Flower of Evil later. And it's many flaws. And how surprised we were to even <laughs> see it, you know, in among all, the, all these categories. We'll get there. Okay. But I would say, like... You know what? Let's just take someone out of this. <laughs> Let's just take a nominee out. Let's take Song Joong Ki out. Okay, you know my thoughts about Vincenzo. If you don't, I'll repeat it. Vincenzo, the character, is boring. He's so boring. Like, I feel like the writer was like, okay, let's write some, let's write a story about a mafia. And then they just stuck to that. Like, he has no, not much character behind, like, the fact that he's from the mafia. So, like, it's, today is the finale. Like, as we're recording this, the finale's out. I don't know what people have said about it, but I've... I've been watching it every week, but I'm not engaged at all. I'm watching it on two times speed. I've I've gone past 1.5 of like the Netflix settings. I've installed my own extension to, to watch it even faster because I'm just so uninterested. But yeah, I would really take him out here. I love him. I, I love Song Joo Ki. He's kind of like my, you know, he's not that great, but I love him. Okay, now that we've taken someone out, I would still say like, Chungi has a good shot. He <laughs> <laughs> if you took out more people, I guess. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, like I really I think he has a shot in that like it, he's not the worst among the five. Look, okay, we can't say anything about the penthouse guy, Judante. We can't say anything about him because we don't know, but like same thoughts about, you know, um the the best actress nominee, like People take the show seriously? That's that's my only comment on that. Okay. Who's left? Lee Jun Gi, Kim Soo Yoon, and Shin Hak Yoon. Okay, let's take out Lee Jun Gi. Yeah, I mean, okay. Can I just say, okay, with the best supporting actor, I still like rely on that miracle that Oh Jung Se will get the day sang and Yi Son Ho will get the best supporting. But in this category, if Soo Yoon or Hak Yoon gets the day sang, then the other one will just get the best actor. Unless, you know, there's another miracle. <laughs> there are so many miracles in the world. <laughs> well, you know? Last year, Kang Hano defeated his seniors. Hey, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was about to go. I went through the previous winners. Okay. So, last year, it was Kang Hano as Wang Yong Shik in Kamel, when the Kamel Blooms. Year before that was Mr. Sunshine, Lee Byung Hoon. Year before that was uh, Stranger, Cho Sung Woo. And then year before that was Gong Yu in, in Goblin. And then... The year before what? that was Go, 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 you won? Yeah, yeah, he won that oh. year. I mean, his his competitors were Han Sok Yu in Doctor Romantic, <laughs> um, Nam Gung Min in Good Manager, Jo Jung Sook in Jealousy Incarnate, and Park Bo Gum in Love in the Moonlight. Oh. Okay. okay, yeah, yeah, you deserve it, Gong Yu. So before Kang Hanul, the, the trend was a bit like the Stoics. You know, the Stoic guys who are they're just it's Cho Sung Lee Byung Hundo. We can't 
the, their acting skills are just yeah. beyond <laughs> beyond words okay and then you know the surprise winner from last year i don't know who people thought it would be maybe they thought it would be yunbin because yeah. like you know Kamel- ah, sorry chloe was a huge hit but then thinking about it locally, Camellia was a bigger hit. Locally, Korea. Locally, Philippines. Locally, Phil- uh, Korea. Oh, okay. No one cares about the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> we only know Chloe and Start Up. What are we talking about? <laughs> anyway, but yeah, thinking about it that way, Camellia was a bigger hit than Chloe, probably. And so, like, you know, he broke that, like, stoic streak with Wang Yongshik. And now, I don't know where we're going. Are we going. Back to the st- well, they're all pretty serious roles. Okay, fine. If I'll, I, I'll, I already talked about Jungi, so fine. For me, if it's between Kim Soo Yoon and Shin Hak Yoon, I would just give it to Kim Soo Yoon. Okay, if only because Gang Tae is such a boring character. Like he's sort of like what Nam Do San. <laughs> I will always bring this. No, like you know how Nam Do San is like his internal struggles about. What do you call that? His imposter syndrome and everything. And what was um Gang Tae's struggle was like, you know, um having a life of his own, like not repressing his feelings. You know, they're all internal, and then, so externally, it's a like it's you you could be bored, you could just play that bo- boring. Um, but with Kim Soo Hyun, it's just like you know all the little details. I remember like we would talk about, um, I remember this for the scene where. Um, Sang Tae, like, revealed that he knew you wanted to kill me at some point, and then, you know, he was, like, saying sorry and crying, and then the little detail about it is, like, he was, like, rubbing his hands, like, you know, the Korean gesture of I'm sorry or something. You, you, you know it, when you watch Super Junior, saying sorry, sorry. My point is, like, Kim Soo Yoon just, Kim Soo Yoon just put so much, like, nuance and character and color to that boring character, so I think he should get credit for that. More than <laughs> <Shin Hakyun. laughs> Just say what you want to say. Fine, I'll just say what I want to say. I don't particularly think like, you know, what's his name even? Dong Shik? Like I don't particularly think it was that, you know, difficult. Or maybe I'm just not in super into like beyond evil as much. Like acting wise <laughs> on Twitter, one one person said that Beyond Evil is full of interesting characters. And so like it's already an interesting character. And he just had to act it out. That is my thought on it. Sorry, just a little background information on us and why we have so many thoughts and it's okay to not be okay. Before the actual start of this podcast, we were supposed to do a K-drama podcast <laughs> together. And we recorded an episode for yeah. It's Okay to Not Be Okay. Like, we had everything. And then, like, the file broke while I was <laughs> editing it. So, one hour of editing, just gone. That's why we have so many thoughts about it's okay to not be okay. Because we have talked about it. But just just never. Just wasn't meant to be. It's meant to be my show. <laughs> not ours. <laughs> okay, okay. But yeah. I, I would also choose Kim Soo Yun. But I don't know. I, I don't I don't know how Korea perceived Beyond yeah. Evil. I think like it wasn't stellar ratings or anything but I mean honestly for JTBC they have pretty low ratings aside from like the extreme standouts like yeah. Sky Castle and World of the Married anyway so yeah generally JTBC has low ratings but like for some reason Beyond Ev- Evil was steadily rising like even you know even like the commercial slots in the PPL was ramping up over the weeks because like the interest was really growing you know as the show went on so like I don't know I, I don't know how Korea sees Beyond Evil in, in Shin Hak Yoon's performance. But I think he did pretty well. It's just that Kim Soo Yoon did the extra effort of elevating a boring character into someone, you know, into a really stellar performance. So, so we'll see. You know, by that argument, maybe Jung Yi could be second place instead of Shin Hak Yoon in my dreams. In your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so those are the actor nominees. Okay, let's move on to best director. I I, I don't know if we'll have a lot of thoughts about this, but but okay. So the nominees are Kwon Yong Il for My Unfamiliar Family, Kim Chol Kyu for Flower of Evil, Kim Hee Won for Vincenzo, Park Shin Woo from It's Okay to Not Be Okay, and Shim Na Yun from Beyond Evil. It's Okay to Not Be Okay? 
Yes. Yeah. It's so pretty. It's <laughs> aside from being pretty. Hmm. I think no. I I like a lot of the I guess the directorial choices in that show. To be honest, I remember even like I remember the first episode. There was like, is it just me? Like that moment where like Moon Young was like the super big person, and then they, and then he pl- she plucked Su Yun out of something. There was like a fantasy part of it. They like, even had like the animated parts, the stop motion yeah. sequences. I like, mean, like when I saw that, I knew like I knew like oh, this is gonna be high quality, man. And we were K drama newbies back then. We were only a few months in. Yeah, it was only yeah. July. Yeah. Hello, we the what we know now compared yeah. to what we knew back then. We knew that this was something special. I would give it to it's okay yeah. to not be okay. True. I mean, with Shim, I with Shim now. Um, with Beyond Evil, I I don't. Um, with Beyond Evil, I did notice. Like, <laughs> one, I noticed the extreme close-ups, but I think the the thriller genre called for it a bit. Yeah. Like, you know, it was a lot of like dialogue heavy, um, intense stuff. It wasn't like Flower of Evil where it's like action heavy, intense yeah. stuff. So I think it called for the close-ups. Um, I. I like the music choice. I I don't know about the cinematography. But I think, yeah, it preserved the mood pretty well. So, I mean, it's it's a good good director, I think. No problems there. But, like, it's okay to not be okay. The extra effort they put into everything. Okay, so here are the more interesting ones. My best screenplay. Okay. Nominees are Kim Soo Jin for Beyond Evil, Kim Moon Jung from My Unfamiliar Family, Yoo Jung Hee from Flower of Evil, <laughs> Jo Young from It's Okay to Not Be Okay, and Ham Young Hee from Record of Youth. First of all, Record of Youth? <laughs> what? Record of Youth? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Just so you know, here's my history with Record of Youth. We tried watching it, right? First three episodes. Yeah. We still had like the two episode, six episode rule. But then like, when I saw that this show, or, like by the third episode, when I saw that this show was written by, written and directed by um Temperature of Love people, I just dropped it. Like, there is no hope to this show. <laughs> Everything I felt was wrong about Temperature of Love in the two episodes that I watched. I only watched two episodes of that show. And I knew I didn't like, I was not going to like this. And then I saw Record of Youth and it had those exact same feelings. And like, from what I've read, you know, on Twitter, obviously, the ending was anticlimactic. It was a Park Bogum, you know, ex- so in a Park a show. Sodom cameo. Yeah, Park Sodom cameo. Like, she didn't get much screen time or character development. And so, okay, looking at the previous best screenplay winners, like, most of them, well, for the past two three years they've been really character heavy shows like Camellia, when the camellia booms my mister and then uh stranger is pretty plot heavy but good great characters as well then dear my friends the year before that great characters episode coming next week um and then the year before that was signal so very plot heavy though and so there's a trend for like good character driven shows winning the best screenplay more than like wow intense amazing plots and all that so like one record of youth, ha- youth has neither of those <laughs> not a great plot and no great characters so let's just take it out i just wanted to spend this time dissing record of youth even if i never watched it yeah. sorry okay maybe run on should have taken its place mm, maybe run on should have taken its place <laughs> with its quirky characters and all but that but kidding aside though maybe like do you like brands do you like brands maybe 18 again should have yeah. taken that <laughs> no but like 18 again is hard because it's a remake true but it was a s- extreme improvement I from know. the terrible <laughs> original <laughs> but okay but okay we've taken out record of youth okay. <clears throat> I would take out flower of evil okay it's my time to shine it's okay. my time to diss oh. flower of evil one the underwater CPR <laughs> To, <laughs> to the amnesia. I look, I've forgiven a lot of Flower of Evil's flaws. But to say that it deserves the best screenplay for the underwater CPR for for Bake He Song? I mean Wait, wait, what's wrong with Bake He Song? Is he a great character even? Oh, like the characterization. Yeah, the ah, writing. Like, I mean, 
you know, it's not a show that's for character development. It's a plotty show. So, you know, you just need a big bad. I'm uh, sorry. Maybe I'm talking about Do Yun Soo and not Bae Ki Song. Ah, okay, okay. But, but, yeah, I, I don't... Let's take Flower of Evil out. No. <laughs> I, I don't think it deserves best screenplay. You should agree. <laughs> you should agree. Why do I feel like there's a gun pointed in my head? <laughs> you should agree. Okay. okay, you know what? Fine. If I agree to that, then let me just say that I think for directing though, like Flower of Evil deserves some credit. He, they may not win it. Because you know what? Now that I think about it, there are like all this horrible like plot stuff in it, right? But then, when it's the action scene, like remember when Joongi was hanging off the the balcony yeah. and then like you know the race to whatever i mean you know when when it was good i think that was credit to the director yeah i, w- I wouldn't say it has any flaws like with what i was seeing like literally seeing yeah. you know but like when i think about what i'm seeing mm. Mm, don't think don't, don't think when no you think. flower of evil okay just just watch just, just enjoy watch <laughs> okay, so but let's just take him out of the screenplay, please. Come on. Okay, you watched my unfamiliar fan. Yes. What are your thoughts? My thoughts are what? <laughs> no, no. Uh, why? <laughs> I mean, how do I say this? I feel like um. So obviously, it's about a family. <laughs> um, and then for a moment there, I they were going with like the amnesia route, and it lasted for like I don't know four or five episodes, and then. They went with the whole, and then after that, it felt like it felt like a terminal illness plot, which they you know eventually like walked back on. Like oh no, it isn't. Um, so I just although I I mean I would argue that there are some emotional heartstrings, and I do like that the end was sort of like about you know um adult children being independent from their their parents and their parents having their own lives, but screenplay not really. I mean, when you have, it's okay to not be okay here. Yeah. Honestly, that's my bet. Yeah, like, what else could go up against that? Beyond Evil, apparently. Because it's the last nominee yeah. that we haven't discussed. Okay. Yes, Beyond Evil. Look, okay, yeah. It's either it's going to go plot heavier, character driven. Yeah. Right? So, we'll see. You have, you diss Beyond Evil a lot. I mean, like, uh, the, the, you know, you, you think lowly of yeah. or lower of it than mm. most people do yeah because you compare it a lot to stranger I do. which i think is unfair because i think those two are some of the best in the thriller yeah. genre which is honestly it's a floundering floundering is that the right word like I it's it's mean. failing as a genre it's really it's kind of weak right yeah. now like i'm sorry for thriller fans but like most thrillers in my experience like one they have either flat characters or like okay characters but the plot is just nonsensical like just twist after twist and then yeah. it doesn't or like it's just all confusion and then how it pulls it all together is like nonsensical or you know it just drops the ball somehow and never is able to pick it back up so thrillers to me are really weak because like it's so dependent on the writing like if you think about it you know because you know some people are like oh what a great thriller but it's just like a lot of cliffhangers or a lot of intense action scenes, but the writing in itself is not that good. You're just impressed by what you're seeing. So I, I really have a low like opinion of thrillers, honestly, based on what I've watched or been unable to watch because I, it just was so boring. Or like I had to wait until episode 15 for things to start getting good, which is not worth it for me. So I think like Beyond Evil is one of the few good thrillers. And like, the fact that you could say that it didn't drop the ball, that it had pretty interesting characters, that, you know, it didn't settle on just one issue. Like, it didn't spend all 16 episodes looking for the serial killer. Like, okay, we resolved it in episode 6, but where's the story going to head? And apparently, like, it, was, it wasn't even like, oh, there was a bigger conspiracy. It was just, like, more things were going on at the same time. And, like, how it ended wasn't, you know, the typical oh, we'll reveal your sins to the world and then you will fall and you will crash and burn because the public will hate you. It was like, no, we will find a way to um to make you destroy each other instead of, you know, just of, of us doing it. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll make you ruin each other the way you ruined us. I think that was how they, they wrapped everything up, which I think was pretty well done. Like, I saw a tweet saying... Um, you know, the finale of Beyond Evil was boring. And it's like, 
why did you expect another major twist after 15 episodes of like everything was pretty well paced everything was tied up together pretty well like the the last episode was for resolution or was to finally bring these people down it wasn't to introduce another major twist that will shake everything up and then leave you feeling unsatisfied because it was so rushed towards the end so i i really think like beyond evil should deserve more credit for being a really good thriller of its own um right i will sound stupid here but <laughs> for beyond evil though the thing with it is that i just wasn't as invested in it probably because like it's a you know with most thrillers you really don't understand what's going on until the end it's sort of like ah this is how it all comes together and that also sort of happened with me with stranger like i had to watch it twice to understand why it was good but when i understood it it's like oh man yeah that's amazing yeah so with i guess with beyond evil um yeah you're right i i am comparing it to stranger the, the thing is with me like stranger even with the first watch i was you know attached to the characters i like i didn't understand what was going on but i liked them i cared about dong jay and <laughs> everything but with beyond evil i guess I, I just didn't have like that emotional pull with any of them so maybe that's sort of why it, it ranks lower for me but yeah for screenplay i still would i would still root for it's okay to not be okay because i think well aside from right the mother plot <laughs> right that yeah. happened but i mean you know some people they tend to praise like individual dialogue or individual lines so much like you know run on yeah you know they they tend to think that those are the shows that they deserve you know the best screenplay just because it has nice lines which by the way is affected by how the translator you know translates yeah, those into so subtitles so you don't know if it um comes off that way in Kore- the korean language but I think with it's okay to not be okay. It, yeah, it has those like really good lines and good moments. But like uh, the first half of the show for me, re- that was where I was super into it because it was really about the character growth, right? Of of Munyong and also Gangte in the process. And then just the second half or the latter part was where I was kind of taken out of it because of the mother plot. But But yeah, I mean... In general, I would still give it to it's okay to not be okay. I think, I think, um, I think it's a reach to say it's the second half. It was like maybe two, three episodes <laughs> for the mother plot. I mean, I get it. Like at some point they were, you know, they were like hinting at it and like it, it kind of dominated. But I think the the bad part of it really was just the reveal of how it happened and then like the parts where they had to catch her or something. Because I mean. I think even in the second half, I know there was still a lot of like character development, or, like about you know, um, like Munyong and Gang Tae getting together and how that you know how would Sang Tae take that? How does you know that whole dynamic work? So I think it was really super interesting. I think um, for me, with it's okay to not be okay. What I really like about it also is that aside from it's character driven, it's like a gothic fairy tale. Um, and I really like how interwoven that whole um, aspect is to the show. I, I remember watching the finale and feeling like, I was like empty for a day, you know. I was just staring into space because I was like, so, uh, but I want to know more. Like, what will Gang Tae and Yong do? How will Sang Tae fare on his own? So, yeah, I think the emotional connection is there. But yeah, it's okay to not be okay. Best screenplay. Okay, last category, best drama. So, uh, nominees are Beyond Evil, It's Okay to Not Be Okay, Flower of Evil, My Unfamiliar Family, and Extracurricular. So, Extracurriculars, we haven't watched. Yeah. My Unfamiliar Family, you would take out? Yeah. Take it out, okay. Uh, Flower of Evil, I would take it out. Yeah, so it's them again. And then... Yeah, it's, see, that's the thing. That's the thing about this year. It's like, they are the two most nominated shows for a reason. It, 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 they're good. They're good, okay? um, Like, the one award that It's Okay to Not Be Okay didn't share with Beyond Evil was Best Actress. Because, you know, who's the best actress <laughs> in Beyond Evil? Uh, but I would still give it to It's Okay to Not Be Okay. Just yeah. for the fact that, like, 
as a whole, it was just so cohesive. Yeah, like 95% solid. Yeah. The 5% is the mother. Yes. But yeah, I think that's that's it. But yeah, for me, my second pick would be Beyond Evil. What would your second pick be? If it's okay to not be okay one the day sound, who would be the next drama in line? Well, I guess it would have to be Beyond Evil. Okay. So let's talk about the day sound. Who are the possible day sound winners? Oh, Jung Se. Oh, jo- okay. But I I agree. You know, I agree, but I okay. Can I just explain though? More than Sonho winning that category. I think it's just that, you know, best supporting actor go um it's just the category that he's in because of the role his of the role in the drama. It has nothing to do with, you know, how well he acted or whatever. And like to be honest, between him and Kim Soo Yoon, he's better. So I think he deserves that day song. And he already won Best Supporting Actor last year. I just I don't know the the politics of Big yeah. Sang if best if it's limited only to best drama and best actor actress nominees. Was right? Kimi Edo nominated for best, best actress? actress. Okay. Yeah, she was best actress. Okay, so previous day song winners: When the Camellia Blooms, the drama; Kimi Edo, uh, in the light in your eyes; uh, Stranger as a drama; Kim Unsuk as ah the screenplay of Goblin, not the whole drama. Oh, oh all right. Uh, Descendants of a Sun of the Sun as a drama. So, hmm, but that's a screenplay though. I don't know. I don't know if a I best know. supporting. I, think, I actually think I think it's all the nominees. All the nominees. Yeah. Okay. If Who so, knows, Lido, you might get the day song. <laughs> wow, a miracle <laughs> over Oh Jung Se. What a surefire way to you know get everyone to hate you for taking a draw for taking an award. Um, but yeah, I mean if it's not it's okay to not be okay. It's all just say. Yeah, it's all just say. More than, you know, Kim Soo Yoon. Yeah. Like, love you, dear. But, but no, just take best actor. Just stay there. <laughs> and let all say take the day song. Yeah. Or I mean, I don't know, maybe screenplay if it's okay to not be okay. So basically, any, <laughs> any it's okay to not be okay. Look, we may be biased, but we are objectively biased. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> again, <laughs> please don't call me a beyond evil hater, okay? I don't hate it. <laughs> it's just that I would also f- think it's unfair if beyond evil gets the day song over it's okay to not be okay. Just cause it's yeah, <laughs> just cause it's okay to not be okay is such a well rounded show. Except the mother and like you know it's sick. It, it's just a thriller. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know Stranger is also just a thriller, but Wait, you know. Let's look at the the nominees in Strangers here. Oh, it was just Cho Sung Woo or Stranger. So, <laughs> what? How do you, do you see the these yeah, are yeah, nominees? It's on Wikipedia. On the night itself. Oh. Just the night itself. Okay. So it's like okay, the day song is usually the last award they announce, right? So if like if one or the other wins it, it's like. So obviously the day song has to go. Well, maybe there are three people yeah. nominated for a day. But then, that, but then that would be terrible, though, because like that one other person. Like, so does that mean they didn't win their category? <laughs> <laughs> That's so sad. Oh, the twenty nineteen year was wild. It was like the light Kim Ye Ja, Yum Jung Ah, and then Sky Castle. Kim Won Sok, the director. Kim Won Sok PD, you made it to this episode. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Kim Won Sok, the director, and then My Mister as a show, and then Lee Byung Hoon, and then Mr. Sunshine That's as crazy. a show. They all deserve it. They all deserve it. Would be so hard. So, like, yeah, the fact that Yum Jung Ah already won, Lee Byung Hoon already won, My Mister already won twice. So, let's just give it to Kim Yeja. Hey, I love Kim Yeja. <laughs> My favorite old lady. But, but yeah, so. The day song. Hmm, we'll see. But we'll see. it's okay to not be it's okay. It's okay to not be okay. Uh, it's my top drama, so yeah. <laughs> it should it should get the day song. The thing is though, though, like now that you talk about that year of like Lee Byung Hoon and everything, I was telling you about this earlier. About how if we were K drama fans in twenty twenty two and you know, we searched like, Oh, what were the big song nominees in twenty twenty one? And like you usually think that these are the good dramas, like like gosh, big song fear, which is kinda true. But Honestly, it's like not that not all of them are that great, to be honest. That's why sometimes, you know, these award shows, like when we see who actually won, it's like, and then we watch it, we're like, really though? <laughs> so, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but these people know the industry and the culture and the everything better than we do. So, 
<laughs> why do our opinions matter? Yeah. They're the panel, not us. But if we were the panel, it's okay to not be okay. We'd win most of these. Mm-hmm. So, but like overall, twenty, I don't think like this year was a particularly good year for K dramas. Honestly, I mean, okay. The thing is, it's kind of funny how it's really just a battle between it's okay to not be okay and beyond evil. But yeah, I think I think it's kind of sad that it it really just revolves around like what three K dramas. Exactly. It's like uh, I don't know. The you know. <laughs> Sorry for Flower of Evil, but like it really just took me by surprise. Like, let's be honest, that we were just completely shocked that it was yeah. here in the first place. So, you know, it's like, was it that good and we just didn't realize it? Or were there not enough good enough shows yeah, to fill the slots? You know, love Joongi, but love Joongi always. Yeah, enjoyed, I enjoyed like the middle, the, yeah. the middle portion of the show. And actually, until the end, yeah. except for the last episode, you know? But I wouldn't say it's like best drama, best screenplay, nom worthy. Yeah. So, uh, even though I've made a lot of podcast episodes, most of the shows I talked about were like old shows. Yeah. You know, I didn't talk about a lot of like ongoing shows that I was really into and wanted to make an episode for it. Yeah, so I I think this year particularly was not that great, except for it's okay to not be okay. Yeah, <laughs> and the thing is that sort of happened in the like the start of the season, the K drama season, right? Because like it's it's around June, because usually May it's the award show, so you know the start of the season is around June. So it's like oh, I was so hopeful, so many good dramas, but I mean, I don't know. So far this year. We have a lot of ongoing shows. This year? Yeah, right. I mean, like, yeah, of yeah, this yeah, year. Yeah. We're, what are we currently watching? Taxi Driver, Law, Law School, School, Dark Hole. We we finished Navillera this week. Like, it's pretty okay so far. But I, I don't think anything will reach the level of, like, when we first watched It's Okay to Not Be Okay. And it was like, wow. Amazing. I don't know. Maybe the fishing village cha 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 with Shin Mina and Kim Son Ho will be amazing. <laughs> just plug, just plug your faves. Just yeah. do it. And hey, come on, we're still looking forward to Jiri San. Right. Oh my gosh. If Kim Un Hee and the the dots goblin, Mister Sunshine director, yeah. and Chu Ji Hoon and Jun Ji Yoon and Song Dong Il if and Oh Jung Se, if all of them let me down the way Sisyphus let me down. <laughs> The way Sisyphus left me let me down. Oh, question. Why did it Sisyphus get like a technical drama, technical effects award? All the money they spent on those sets and It was horrible and... CGI. Hey, except for the terrible scene in the episode zip 3, the zipline, the rest of the effects were good. They spent all that money on the actors and the set and not the script. Oh. God, I don't know, maybe Cho Chung asked for a high talent. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all the money, all the budget went to Cho Chung Woo. Gosh. Hey, I love Cho Chung Woo. You might not hear sarcasm in that, but that was sarcasm. So, so those are our thoughts on the Big Sang nominees this year. Um, we'll see, you know, on Sunday if we're wrong, which we might be. Is it on Sunday already? Next Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. So this is posted on Wednesday. It's next Sunday. So we'll see on Sunday if we're wrong. And then you'll see me on the next Wednesday after that. One week after this epi- um episode is posted. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'll be happy because Lee Do-yoon won. Or maybe you'll never see me again because this podcast is going to die because I hate K-dramas now. Um, but But yeah, looking forward to that. And also... Looking forward to 2021 K dramas. Like, we have a lot that we're excited about, but, you know, we were excited about Sisyphus. <laughs> Biggest disappointment in Every planet. time you're too excited about something, Don't think be. it could be Sisyphus. Like, I, like I asked for Cho Shung Wu emotions and love line. I got them both and I was not happy about them. And. Honestly, based on our experience, like when we watch shows with no expectations, th- those are the shows we end up liking more. 
So let's all just stop expecting <laughs> and let's just have no expectations and then enjoy what we're given and be mindless consumers so that we can be happy. Okay, don't don't do what we do and expect too much and then get disappointed. But that's it for this episode. Thank you to my sister for being here, for accompanying me in this episode. We were not angry today. We we're not angry. We just talk like this. Okay? Yes. It's just how we talk. Yeah. Okay, we're not angry. Mm-hmm. We're very calm. But okay. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And I will see you soon. Mm-hmm.